In this question, we're trying to draw the Lewis diagram for a polyatomic iron. The iron in this question has a formula NO3 minus. So our first step is to calculate the number of valence electrons in a neutral NO3 molecule. So let's go to our periodic table. N nitrogen is here and O oxygen is here. And we've got nitrogen in group 15 and oxygen in group 16. So that tells us that nitrogen is going to have five valence electrons, according to our shortcut, and oxygen is going to have six valence electrons, according to our shortcut. So we have nitrogen with five valence electrons. We have oxygen with six valence electrons. And in our molecule, we have one nitrogen and we have three oxygens. So that's one set of five valence electrons and three sets of six valence electrons, which adds up to give a total of 23 valence electrons. So we can check that in our first box here. Okay, wonderful. Next, it asks us how many valence electrons are in a NO3 minus polyatomic iron? So we have to remember here that a negative charge that means that we've gained electrons. Since electrons are negatively charged, when we gain them, we become more negatively charged. On the other hand, if we had a positive charge, that means that we've lost electrons. So here, since we have a negative charge of one, that means we've gained one electron. So we had 23, we gained one electron for a total of 24 electrons. So let's check that here. Okay, wonderful. So we know we've got 24 valence electrons in our polyatomic iron. Now we're ready to draw our Lewis diagram. So we're going to start with step one, which is drawing one bond between each of our atoms. And we're going to keep a running total of our electrons as we go. So we know we have 24 that need to be in the molecule. We've just added three single covalent bonds for a total of six electrons. So we're going to subtract those. And now we have 18 valence electrons that still need to be assigned. Our next step is to add valence electrons to our outer atoms. So we're going to go ahead and do that so that those outer atoms obey the octet rule. So right now, each of our oxygens has one covalent bond. That's two electrons. They need eight, according to the octet rule. So they each need six more electrons in lone pairs. So that's one, two, three sets of lone pairs for six electrons on each of our oxygen atoms. Okay, so we've just added six electrons on each of our oxygen atoms. We've added a total of 18 electrons. So we've used up 18 electrons, leaving us with zero. So we've now used up all of our electrons. Our last step is to check that our atoms obey the octet rule. So currently, our three oxygen atoms do obey the octet rule, since they've got three pairs of lone electrons and one covalent bond, which each provide two electrons for a total of eight. The nitrogen, however, has three covalent bonds with two electrons each, so a total of six electrons, but it needs eight in order to obey the octet rule. However, we can't just add more electrons because we've already used them all up. So instead, we're gonna need to take one of our lone pairs on one of our oxygens and turn it into a bond. It doesn't matter which oxygen you pick, you can pick any of them, so I'll pick this oxygen here. I'm going to take this lone pair and I'm going to turn that into a bond. So now we can see nitrogen has four covalent bonds with a total of eight electrons. These two oxygens on the sides each have three lone pairs and one covalent bond for a total of eight electrons. And our oxygen at the top 
has two lone pairs and two covalent bonds, each providing two electrons, which gives us a total of eight electrons. So now all of our atoms obey the octet rule, and we have the total number of electrons that equals what we should have for a NO3 minus ion, which is 24. So finally, we're ready to check our diagram in this table over here. We have two single bonds on our diagram here and here. We have one double bond on our diagram here. We don't have any triple bonds on this diagram. And for lone pairs, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lone pairs. So as you can see, when we're drawing Lewis diagrams for polyatomic ions, it works exactly the same way as for neutral molecules. The only difference is right at the beginning, when we calculate the number of electrons provided by each atom, we need to add or subtract electrons based on the charge. If it's negatively charged, we gain electrons. If it's positively charged, we lose electrons. Then we use that number as our total valence electrons for when we're um, assigning electrons in our diagram.